Hello, my name is Sue Lewis and I'm going to be running you through this presentation. So it's aimed at year 11 and it's going to help you get ready for making your post 16 option choices. So for everybody, whether you're young or old, there's particular things you need to do in order to be able to manage your career. And these are six of the particular skills you need. In this session, we're going to be focusing on two of these, being able to see the big picture. And for that, we're going to be showing you how, you, how your post 16 choices fit with your future jobs and career decisions. And for managed career, it'll be an opportunity for you to start to make a plan and develop a pathway into your future. So in this lesson, there's about 20 minutes introduction. Then you can have about 25 minutes to do activities on the Career Pilot website that will help you think more about your career and then we'll do a wrap up at the end. So what is a career? So the definition of a career is an individual's journey through life, learning and work. So everybody will have a different career and we'll all have different looking careers by the time we finish our work in life. And a job is something you might do to earn money as part of your career journey. So you might have jobs in all sorts of sectors and you might have many different jobs in your whole career. So in terms of careers for year 11, the big things you need to think about is what you're going to do at the end of year 11. Which pathway are you going to be choosing? And also you'll be focused on getting the best GCSEs you can. So today's lesson, we're going to get you registered if you haven't already on Career Pilot, or you can sign in. We're going to look at how you can manage your career, what you could be doing right now. You can do some activities on Start With You and Career Pilot to find out more about yourself and think about what jobs or courses you want to do in the future. You can add your qualifications to my qualifications, like a ladder. You can plot your route. And then you're going to be considering the different options at 16 and begin to think about which ones might appeal to you. But just to get us started, the good news is you won the lottery. The prize is a holiday in one of these places. So you could go to Barbados, Australia, South Africa, Belgium or England. Which one will you choose? Have a think. You don't have to tell anybody which one are you choosing. But hold on a minute. I've just found out a few more details about the holiday. Barbados, you're going to be packing bananas. Australia, you're sheep shearing. South Africa, you're picking grapes. Belgium, you're testing chocolate. And in England, you've got Glastonbury tickets. So now we have a bit more information about each of these prizes. Which place do you want to go to now? So put your hand up if you've changed your place since you found out a bit more about it. So what this does is make the point that the more you know, the more better place you are to make a good informed decision. So that's why for your poor 16 choices, you should be finding out as much as you can. And today's lesson will help you with that. So if you're thinking about managing your future career, this video kind of explains what you could be doing right now. It's about three minutes long. Imagine your life in 10 years time. Are you being driven to work in your electric car? Eating meatless burgers for lunch with robots cleaning your home? Technology is changing jobs. In 10 years, there'll be lots of new jobs while others will change or simply disappear. You're likely to be in work for 50 years and have at least 10 different jobs by the time you're 42. Seem like a long way off? A happy future starts with some of the decisions you take in the next few years. So to get ready for careers, what should you be doing now? Firstly, Know yourself. You are unique. You have likes, dislikes, strengths, qualities, and things you value that are important to you. These things can help you identify a future career. You have skills too, from school, hobbies, work, or volunteering. Imagine you are learning something new, like photography or rock climbing. You will use a range of different skills. Many of these are transferable skills that you can take from one job to another. Employers love these. The second thing you can do is do stuff. Trying out new stuff makes you feel good about yourself and builds transferable skills. For example, you may or may not pass your driving test first time. It doesn't matter. 
Learning new things develops transferable skills and increases your ability to bounce back and keep trying. That's called resilience. Skills can lead to part-time jobs, useful cash and jobs in the future. You can also talk about these skills on job applications and in interviews. So you know what you like and you're good at. You're trying new things and building skills and experiences. What else can you do? The third thing you can do is to make sure you know all your options. Do you know what qualification and grades you need? Will the course or training help you on your journey? Which option would be best for you? And if your plan A looks watertight, always have a plan B and even a plan C just in case. The fourth thing is to make sure you use your supporters. Teachers, family, friends and coaches know you well. They'll help you identify your strengths, skills and interests and help you on your way. If you can, grab a chance to talk to a careers advisor. You'll get individual help with your plan. They're professionally trained and have loads of up-to-date information. They'll listen to you, inspire you and help you create a plan for the future. And there's Career Pilot too. A free website with all the careers information in one place showing you all your options, including information on jobs, courses and lots more. Use the career tools to find out more about you and save all of this in one place to share with your supporters. So to get ready for careers, what should you be doing now? Know yourself. Do stuff and develop your skills. Make sure you know all your options. Use your supporters. Your future starts now. Get ready. So hopefully from that video, you can see the key things that you can be doing to plan your future career. And what we're going to do in this session is to show you how you can do some of these things through the Career Pilot website. So this is Career Pilot. If you haven't seen it before, it's a one-stop careers website that's free for you to use until you're 20. Just to show you around the site, in this top blue bar, there are what we call our popular tools. We can look at information about jobs. You can search for courses. You can put your qualifications on a ladder. There's over a thousand videos of people talking about jobs and qualifications they went on to do. This is our three-stage process. Start with you, explore your options, plan your next steps, and in there, particular activities you can do that will help you make a good decision. But you might already have a pathway in mind, so you can look at further education or apprenticeships or higher education and get ideas of the things you need to consider. So today we're going to be using careerpilot.org.uk. Now one thing about CareerPilot, if you register, which you can do straight here, or sign in if you've registered before, you can build your full report. So everything you're interested in, you could put in the career tools. So it might be a job or a value or a qualification, and that will create your full report. And I'll show you more about that later. So to use your career tools is quite simple. In the top right-hand corner, it's the option to add. So I'm adding a job. It'll be in my job sectors and in my main report. And at any time, I can get back to the jobs I'm interested in. I can also change them if I'm no longer interested in a job. So to get you started, think about jobs and where they're going to be in the future. So as a whole group, it's only going to take three minutes. Uh, suggest ideas of jobs or sectors you think are going to grow or decline in the next 10 years. There's some example sectors there you could think about which ones of these are going to grow or decline. So if you're the teacher, you can give your group three minutes to come up with some ideas. You could jot them on a whiteboard. So you might want to pause this video for three minutes so that your group can think about this question. Great. So hopefully you had an opportunity to consider which jobs or job sectors are growing or declining. What we know for sure is that there's lots of flex within what's called the labour market. And knowing about it, it's is called labour market information or labour market intelligence. Can know where the jobs are so you can line yourself up to a sector where you know there's going to be lots of opportunities. And what we can show you is how Career Pilot can help you to find out about labour market information called LMI for short. 
What we do know is that these four sectors really are going to be growing a lot in future. Medical, health science and care, IT and digital technology, engineering, construction, and of course, environmental, because that's a major concern for the whole planet. So these certainly are good sectors to line yourself up with if they're of interest to you. And there will be others, of course, as well. So as the video mentioned, there were four things you could do to get ready for your future career. Number one was knowing yourself. And in Career Pilot, we have got a whole section called Start With You. And what you can do is do particular activities that will help you find out more about yourself. You could do the job quiz and see what job sectors might suit you. Start with the subject and see where it might lead. Start with your values, like what's important to you, where might that take you. Do the skills profile so you know what skills you've got to offer. Let me just show you some of those things. So the job quiz, there's 50 pictures of things you could do in a job situation. Tick as many as you want to, and then it'll tell you what sectors seem to more closely match with your interests. And then you can look at all the jobs, and I'm sure you'll find things there you never even thought of before. And for each of those jobs, you'll have some labour market information. Is it going to grow? How many people work in that sector already? So just click, and then you'll get in to see that actual sector. You can also start with a subject. So if you've got a subject you absolutely love, then you can click on that and you'll get ideas about jobs or courses that subject could lead on to. Or you could start with your values, something you're really passionate about. So it might be that you want to prevent climate change. I'm clicking on I want to be creative in my working life. And then I get ideas of jobs that I could do with that passion, but also how I can build on that passion to sell myself to employers. You could also do the skills profile. So here you'll do a quiz and it'll ask you what you've done in your life, your learning, everything you take. I've kept going with a hobby or sport out of school. It'll tell you what skills that particular activity is giving you. And all your skills are added into the skills profile. So this example here shows that this particular person had four examples from the quiz. But what they then did was add some other examples of their own. So today, if you could just add one or two, that'd be great. Something you might have done, like babysitting or helping your dad with his company or whatever it might be, being in a team sport. Add the example, say what skills it's given to you, and then they'll all be banked for later when you want to apply. You can also compare your skills with a job. So if you type in the name of a job, you can see what skills that job requires and see your own skills alongside it. So in the video, I also talked about doing stuff to build your CV and your skills. Now, we know that if you're in your 11, your number one priority is GCSEs or BTECs. That is what you need to focus on. But you might be doing other things out of school. So our advice is, if you can, don't drop them because they look really good in your CV. So try to hold on to those things if you can. And then number three on the video was know all your options. And that's really what we're going to focus on today. So choosing options, what do you need to think about? Well, what grades do you like to get? Because that will influence what opportunities you have after year 11, especially for English and maths. How do you like to learn? Is it by doing or by studying? Some people like to start with a job because they've already got a job in mind and look at the best ways to get to that job. But you could do the other way around. You stick with the subject you love and then think about jobs later. And just bear in mind, there's lots of different ways of getting to the same future job often. So these are the qualifications we have in England. They go from level one right up to level eight. And there's three pathways. The academic pathway, which you're on now with your GCSEs. Vocational, which is related to a job area. And then workplace, where you're being trained by an employer. So you work in and get trained at the same time. So that what you'll be thinking of is what level of GCSEs you're going to get. So if you get GCSEs at level one to three, that'll be a level one qualification. If you get five GCSEs, level four to nine, that's a level two qualification. And then you'd be thinking, well, what am I going to do next? So you could be choosing something like a BTEC in the vocational pathway, and they would be quite general and related to a job area. Or you could be doing A-levels in the academic area, or you might be doing an apprenticeship at different levels according to what you bring, whether you've got a level one or level two. So we're going to focus in a bit on some of these options to so see how they work. But there are different routes, as I said, into the same job. So both Lucy and Leon are nurses. They're qualified with a degree, but they did it in different ways. 
Lucy did her GCSEs, she got level two, and then she did a BTEC in health and social care at level three. Then she went to university and did a nursing degree. And when she got to level six, she was a qualified nurse. Leon did it slightly differently. He did his A-levels and then he got a nursing associate uh, role at a local hospital, which was an apprenticeship pathway. And then he worked his way up to getting a nursing degree. And it often is the case there's different ways to actually get to the same point. You have to check that out. So in terms of the pathways, one is a vocational pathway route. So just to explain that, there's vocational courses. Some schools offer them, colleges offer a lot of them. And you could do a general course, which might relate it to a job area like health and social care or business. But there are also opportunities to train specifically for a job. New qualifications called T levels, technical levels, and they will train you to do a specific job. More of that in a minute. So colleges offer lots of vocational courses. Schools offer some. Colleges offer them at lots of different levels. Some colleges offer A-levels, but some don't. Students can reset their maths and English GCSEs at college. Um, many level three vocational courses at a college or sixth form require four GCSEs at level four or above. But the colleges have, often have level one, two courses as well. So colleges are quite locally based. There might be one you already know about quite near to where you live. There are quite a lot across the country. Here's a few examples of courses. Could be they're doing level one or two or three. Could be doing something like accounts or animal care. Health and social care is a very general one. Plumbing is quite specific. It's training you to be a plumber. The T level is training you to do digital design. And sports was a very specific one. They might be training you to do an aspect of sport, like coaching, for example. So on the vocational pathway, I mentioned T-levels, which are quite new qualifications, and they're delivered within colleges. And that is where you're going to be trained to do a specific job role. So you need to know there's something you want to do. 80% of the time will be in the classroom, like in a college, and 20% will be work placements. And one T-level is equivalent to three A-levels. So they're quite in-depth training for a specific job. But you do need to know that's the job you're interested in. So in bold there, those are the sort of sectors. And in normal text, those are the actual roles you might be trained to do. Check what your college offers. Every college will have a slightly different offer. So the other pathway was work-based. So this is where you're being trained to do a job actually in the workplace, an apprenticeship. So these are the other way around from T-levels, where 80% of the time you'll be in, in work and 20% you might be at a college. You will get paid as you do in that job. Minimum you'll get paid for 37 hours a week will be £177. But some employers top that up a bit more as well. You're going to learn by doing the job. Somebody will be supervising you. But you have to find one. It's like finding a job. You have to find a vacancy. So apprenticeships are available at all sorts of levels. I guess coming from GCSE, the options will be intermediate, which is level two, or advanced, which is level three. And then after that, you could go on to do a higher or degree apprenticeship if there is one in your chosen job sector. You need to check that out as well. So academic, this is what you probably know most about. GCSEs are in the academic pathway. The next route could be to do A-levels. Most schools, all schools offer A-levels if they've got a sixth form. Some colleges offer them as well. And they do expect you have at least grade six in the A-level you want to study. But just check that out because every school is slightly different. Normally you study three or four. Sometimes you study four and then drop down to three in the second year. Um, your schools will advise you on the best thing to do. It could be a chance to do a new subject. Some things become available at A-levels like psychology or law that you couldn't do at GCSE. And after A-levels, you could go on to higher education in a college or to university, or you could do an advanced or a higher apprenticeship. In Career Pilot, there's a whole section about your choices 16. If you go to any of these tiles, you'll find lots of information. And don't forget to bookmark the pathway you're interested in because that then will be in your career tools. 
Then you can start to explore your options. We've got a whole section called Explore Options. Look at your choices, 16, or maybe look at jobs. If you've already got a job in mind, you can see what routes you can take into that job. Every profile will explain that in some detail. So this is what you're going to do now for the next 20, 30 minutes. You're going to get registered on CareerPilot if you haven't done that before. If you have done it before, then just sign in. Don't register again because otherwise you'll have two accounts. If you've forgotten your password, you can do a forgotten password. You just need to remember the email you used when you first registered. Then you could do some activities from start with you. Do the things that are most useful for you or redo them if you've done them before because things might have changed. Then you can go to the qualification planner where you can add in your qualifications. All you need to do is tag the ones you're interested in and then you can add your subjects to that. And then you're going to look at your post 16 options in some detail. So you've got about 25 minutes to do these activities. If you're the teacher now, you might want to pause this. Just bear in mind, you need to allow about five to 10 minutes at the end to do the wrap up. So you might need to flex this time if the session's running a little bit late. OK, so pause the video and be back in 20, 20 25 minutes. Great. Hopefully you had a chance to explore CareerPilot and find out more about your interests, but also look at jobs and other things that might be available, courses, apprenticeships. So now I haven't had a chance to explore those pathways of 16, I'd be interested to know which ones you're particularly interested in. So what we know is there's the academic pathway, the vocational, the work-based pathway, and I guess vocational splits into a general course about a sector or a specific course where you're going to get trained to do a particular job. So put your hand up now if you're thinking about the academic pathway at 16. And then put your hand up if you're thinking about the apprenticeship pathway where you're going to be trained to do a job in the workplace and get paid to do that. And then put your hand up if you're thinking about a vocational course, either general or maybe one of the new T levels, technical levels. So just to remind you, the last thing that the video mentioned was about using your supporters. And don't forget, there's lots of people who want to help you to make a good career decision. So make the most of your family, your teachers, careers advisors. And of course, career pilot is there for you to use until you're 20. One other thing you could do, you could do it now if there's time, but if there isn't time, you could do it in your own time. In stage three of the three stage process, you can put some action points in. So it's good to have one or two things you're going to do to take forward your career. It might be you're going to go to an open day or you're going to look at some additional information and you could tick off when you've achieved these things. So it's a nice way of keeping a record. Just to remind you that everything you're going to do in the career tools is leading towards a report. You can view that in different ways through a dashboard, which is like a summary or your full report, which will be quite detailed. You can also download your full report and share it with somebody in your family or somebody at school. And that report's gonna move up every year. You can keep changing things, but it'll record a snapshot every year for you. So you'll see a whole history of your career thoughts. Okay, so just to remind you, when we started, we talked about the six things everybody needs to do in order to be able to manage their career well. And um, today we focused on two of those, seeing the big picture. Hopefully now you can say that you have seen how your post-16 choices fit with your future jobs and your career. And in terms of managing careers, hopefully you start to make a plan and develop a pathway into your future. And you can now tick these two points. So well done for today. Thank you for listening, doing all the tasks we asked of you and good luck with all your future plans.